Kirby Y Ubers is a pretty interesting metagame. It's sort of like when you play the first month of a new generation on Showdown, except that generation just happens to be Gen 1. Obviously it's not like the true playground experience, because you can't just use Fissure and Double Team and Sleep Powder everything. But I guess that's just my cross to bear. Gen 1 Ubers is honestly not even that much more centralized than Gen 1 OU. It turns out that Pokemon that are OU in Gen 1 tend to not just get run over by strong, fast psychic types. Until you, like, really know what you're doing, four of your team slots can feel kinda locked in, but that's not that much different than an OU. And since you have to get kind of creative to put their Mewtwo in a bad position while preserving your own Mewtwo, I would say there's a greater variety in movesets than you would typically see in OU. The overall team structures look kind of homogenous, but that just makes it more like a board game in a way, where you and your opponent will usually have the same or similar resources. So like, Mewtwo's the queen, and Mew's the blank tile, and crits and body slam paras are the community chest, and freeze is when your drunk stepdad gets fed up and goes in the garage for a really long time. Gen 1 Mewtwo is one of the most notorious boogeymen in Pokemon history because of its perfect gamer genes. We dreamed of creating the world's strongest Pokemon. And we succeeded. My man is just so completely and bombastically above curve in every area. Even compared to the next best Pokemon, Mew, Mewtwo is stronger, faster, bulkier, and arguably even has a better move pool. Mewtwo learns every move it would possibly want to use, and compared to Mew, only misses out on Swords Dance and Explosion. But Mewtwo still learns Self-Destruct, and trades Swords Dance for Amnesia. Gen 1 Amnesia being an infamously stacked move that just doubles your special stat, since special attack and special defense are the same thing in Gen 1. Turns out, that's pretty fucking good on a Pokémon that's stronger and faster than Alakazam right out the box. I can't remember anything. And to top it all off, Mewtwo's even got this... thing. For nutrients. Mewtwo's only debatable flaw in Gen 1 is that in any meta where it's freed, the one type that resists Psychic, Psychic, is going to make up at least half of most viable teams. Also, the fact that Mewtwo is just better than every other Pokémon in Gen 1 means that it has the least to gain and the most to lose from any of that good, Gen 1 magic. So your kind of level 1 Mewtwo set is going to look like this. It's the most straightforward and self-sufficient, and it makes you feel like the final boss. Amnesia and Recover are mandatory on 99% of Mewtwo sets, for obvious reasons. Amnesia is good for all the things you think it is, and critically, a Mewtwo that does not have Amnesia will almost always lose to one that does. Recover arguably has an even bigger influence on the tier than Amnesia does, because very few Pokémon can do more than 50% to Mewtwo in one hit without a crit, and the ones that can basically need to Swords Dance or Explode to accomplish it. Rest seems tempting to protect your Mewtwo from paralysis, but it's not really worth it, because you don't want to forfeit turns to the other Mewtwo or their Mew. Keep in mind that when you rest to get rid of your paralysis in Gen 1, it does not get rid of the paralysis speed drop until you switch out. So if they switch in a Mew on the turn you use it and then Swords Dance, they can hit you twice before you can attack them. 
Also, there are like at least as many situations where your Mewtwo being paralyzed helps you as there are where it hurts you. The choice between Thunderbolt and Ice Beam comes down to whether you feel more pressured by Slowbro or Executor. Executor is the more immediately threatening because it has double status moves and can explode on you. But Slowbro is a more threatening win condition with Amnesia and can potentially just PP stall the shit out of you. Psychic is obviously your big stupid stab move, but that's not really what it's useful for per se, since Psychic has pretty bad coverage in Ubers. It's actually useful because Psychic has a 1 in 3 chance to drop the special stat in Gen 1, which can eventually break through light screen Chansey and also notably causes a shenanigan. Hey kids, it's number time! Ooh, boy, numbers! Alright, so pretty much, stats in Generations 1 and 2 have a hard limit of 999 for the purpose of damage calculation. The purpose of this is so that at no point in the damage formula is the number bigger than 1023, which is important because that is a video game number. It is the highest number that can be represented in 10 bits. In Generation 1, a level 100 Mewtwo will have a special stat of 406, assuming it has perfect DVs and max stat experience. Yes, those are different than IVs and EVs. Just look it up. Please, just look it up. This means that a perfect Mewtwo can only use Amnesia twice before it hits the limit, because a plus 4 Mewtwo will have a special stat of 1218. For reasons unknown to god or man, their method of stopping you from gaining more positive stat modifiers once you've hit the limit is just to simultaneously apply a minus one modifier every time you do. And I guess they just forgot that there's three moves that give you a plus two stat boost instead of a plus one. Oops. Oopsie. This means that if a perfect Mewtwo amnesias twice, it can amnesia one more time, raising its stage to plus 5, and it will have a stat of 1,421. Normally this doesn't matter, because anytime you do that past 999, it'll just stay 999. It always applies that limit after a positive stat modifier. However, due, due to, to a, a programming, programming error, error the check to see if you're over 999 is not applied after a negative stat modifier, which means that after a negative stat modifier, the stat can exceed 1023 and roll over past zero. So given a long enough PP war, or just a battle against someone who expects the game to work correctly, if a Mewtwo at plus 5 special is hit by Psychic and its special stage is lowered to 4, its special stat will roll over past 0, becoming some very mediocre number that you can just fucking hit it with any move with when it does have those numbers. <laughs> Mewtwo's attacking options are actually very malleable. This is one of the only Pokémon in Gen 1 that learns more than four moves it wants to use, and actually has the stats to use them. You can drop Psychic entirely and just roll Bolt Beam coverage. This has the advantage of being able to freeze the other Mewtwo without being in danger of getting PP stalled by Slowbro. Exeggutor is less likely to explode on you now, but you do have to worry more about Snorlax self-destructing on you, because you need to chip it more before you can kill it with a plus 4 Thunderbolt or Ice Beam. It is important to note, though, that a plus 4 Psychic doesn't one-shot Snorlax from full HP either. Bummer. Also, without Psychic, you just get PP stalled by Light Screen Chansey for days. You can try to freeze it with Ice Beam, but that will activate Freeze Claws, and one of the main advantages of using Ice Beam is that you can try to freeze the other Mewtwo. An elegant solution to the Chansey problem is just to use Submission, the worst good move in Pokémon history. 
Submission is very likely to two-shot Chansey, especially when you take into account that Mewtwo crits a little bit more than 25% of the time. Submission also hilariously makes you much better in the Mewtwo ditto because it has as much PP as Thunderbolt and Ice Beam combined. This is definitely the tier where PP management is the most equivalent to HP management, and I would recommend you play it if you aren't already convinced that some of the PP values in this game are, like, wildly high. Jesus Christ. Wow. What? You expect to do more it or less? It does so little. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, <laughs> 32 PP. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Speaking of, Mewtwo can basically guarantee that it wins the PP War against the other Mewtwo by using the combination of Amnesia, Recover, and Barrier, which, combined with Thunderbolt, have 136 PP. Even more effective if you can get your Mewtwo paralyzed beforehand. The disadvantage is that you only have one attacking move's worth of PP before your opponent can just switch stall forever. Also, the turns you're spending using Barrier are more turns where Gen 1 can happen to you and you can just get fucking frozen, but still, you can do this. You can do this to someone you presumably know pretty well, because you had to ask them to play Gen 1 Ubers with you, because there's not a permanent ladder for it. Something to note is that a Mewtwo set like this that just aims to waste the other Mewtwo's time and stay in for a billion turns wants a special stat of 341, which will prevent it from overflowing when it's dropped to plus 4 from a Psychic Special drop. On Showdown, you would accomplish this with 26 IVs and 8 EVs. In real, you would accomplish this with 13 DVs and some amount of stat experience. I don't know how much, I don't want to figure it out. Self-destruct on Mewtwo is a really funny option to set up a queen trade with the other Mewtwo. It's not as strong as an Executor Explosion or Snorlax's self-destruct, but people are way more likely to leave their Mewtwo in against another Mewtwo than either of those two Pokémon. And securing a kill on the other Mewtwo can set the stage for a sweep with Amnesia Slowbro or Swords Dance Mew. Oh yeah, there's like, another one. So before Mew was the most goaded hyper offense mon of all time, it was merely the second best Pokémon in the game. Second comes right after first. Mew certainly gets overshadowed by Mewtwo as the face of Gen 1 Ubers because Mew's traits are less clickbaity, and it has the most boringest numbers of all time. But I'll have you know you're looking at a Pokémon that has a 97.2% viability, according to the RBY Ubers viability rankings thread, which has made the bold decision to organize everything with these very confounding and vaguely intimidating looking numbers. Hey, did you know that Sky Attack is 2% or maybe 2.7% viable in Gen 1 Ubers? I know I'd get in big drama if I left that out. Mew's ability to learn every TM is slightly less impressive in Gen 1, where some of the TMs are just like worse than Tackle or don't do anything, or are banned for causing the fucking game to desync. But signing the Dark Contract with Route 25 Youngster does give you a Swords Dance user that's better than Victory Bell. Mew is almost as defined by Swords Dance as Mewtwo is by Amnesia. And even though Swords Dance seems just worse on paper, Mew does appreciate boosting sort of perpendicular to Mewtwo so that the boosts don't just cancel each other out. Also, the physical bulk of the tier is just generally lower than the special bulk. To complete the parallel, Mew even learns a recovery move. It is undeniably funny that Softboiled is a TM in Gen 1, and two fucking Pokémon learn it. 
neither of which is the guy who looks like this. Those two moves make up the backbone of almost every Muse set, but there's not really a standard setup to complement it. There's actually a lot of different directions you can go in. I guess the most obvious combo is just to go with Body Slam and Earthquake, because they're simply the best, no drawback physical moves. Not just that Mew learns, but just like, in the game. The combination of these attacks on a Swords Dancer with recovery can be pretty overwhelming. And if Mew was a normal type, it would probably be better than Mewtwo. This setup doesn't have an immediately threatening offensive presence, so it is pretty susceptible to getting status while it's setting up by a Pokémon like Executor or Slowbro. And while Mewtwo sometimes likes being paralyzed because it helps it PP stall and it keeps it from getting frozen, Mew almost always hates getting paralyzed. Mew does have access to Explosion to rectify this, which has more immediate pressure and threatens to one-shot everything except Gengar and Rock types with one boost. However, you do relegate yourself to either being walled by Gengar or forced to explode on Zapdos, depending on your choice of the other attacking move. I guess you could also run Explosion over Soft Boiled if you're fucking nuts, if you're crazy. If you got that dog in you. I guess it's worth noting that unless you run Rock Slide, you get 100% walled and PP stalled by Reflect Rest Aerodactyl, whose unique combination of a ground immunity and a normal resistance actually serves a function, unlike in OU. It's still not, like, good, because it's not like Slowbro, who can PP stall Mewtwo and sweep. Aerodactyl literally just PP stalls Mew, but it is, like, pretty funny. Reflect in one attacking move has possibly the highest ceiling of any Mew set, and is a pretty terrifying win condition under certain circumstances. Reflect makes Mew less afraid of one of the most consistent ways of removing Mew and Mewtwo, which is self-destruct and explosion and also gives it the edge in a Mew Ditto against a Mew that doesn't have Reflect. Once again, the issues are being walled by either Gengar or Zapdos, and also just boosting with multiple moves over the course of multiple turns, and like, so many bad things can happen to you in Gen 1. You think you're bad until Tauros crits you twice and steals the catalytic converter off your car. Mew can also go with more of a goon set that just sits around and pisses you off and then explodes on you. Probably pretty good. Probably some pretty good stuff. Paralysis plus Explosion is very good in Gen 1 because if something is faster than you and explodes, you don't take an action that turn. So even if a Mew or Mewtwo predicts it, they can't just soft-boiled or recover to offset the damage. Probably the funniest set Mew can run is Transform, which basically serves as a very specific counter to other Mews that don't have Reflect or Thunder Wave. Since it basically just turns you into a Mew that does have those moves, plus the other good moves. You Thunder Wave the other Mew and use Reflect, which stays active even after you transform into the other Mew, and then you have their Swords Dance boosts, plus Reflect, plus their Paralyze. If that happens, you're probably going to win the game, but you can pretty much only go for it when you think you can win the game, because if you reveal the set too early, then it becomes almost useless. I suppose Transform does have some utility outside of that, in that, like, if you transform into the other Mewtwo, you've got two Mewtwos, right? I don't wanna be... I don't wanna be me. So you do have to run some other Pokémon. As much as you and I both wish every game could just be this happening six times.
the next best Pokemon is definitely the big man. I'm a big man. I'm a big, expansive man. Snorlax is maybe a little more linear than it is in OU, because it's harder to get away with, like, Reflect Rest and Amnesia Rest sets. But Snorlax's ability to 1v1 pretty much any Pokemon in the game with just its huge HP and big stupid stab moves does extend to the Ubers Pokemon as well. Snorlax is honestly probably about as good as Mew at making progress on average, and really appreciates there being fewer normal types and more psychic types in general, because it gives it more targets that it can paralyze with Body Slam. A paralyzed Mewtwo is very afraid of a Snorlax, and even an unparalyzed Mewtwo is afraid of a Snorlax at full HP. You can't even kill it with a crit psychic at max special, because in Gen 1 crits ignore your own positive stat modifiers. Also, having a stab self-destruct is just very nice. Like, you blow up so much in Gen 1 Ubers, it's pretty much the funniest thing about it. But I don't want to be a bomb! Alright, I know what everybody's wondering, and don't worry, Chansey is a staple. Okay? Don't you goddamn worry. Yes, the Pokémon that already feels like it was modded into the game is pretty good in a tier where the best Pokémon is a special attacker. The mid-game sleeper set with Sing functions about as well as it does in OU, but with the juiciest sleep target in the world with Mewtwo. It's still Sing though, but uh, you, you try not to think about it. Don't sing if you want to live long They have no use for your song You're dead, you're dead, you're dead You're dead and out of this world Seismic Toss is the most consistent damage when you're trying to spread your dual status, but you can go Ice Beam to try to fucking freeze something too. However, Ice Beam is a hell of a lot less threatening to a Mewtwo that is already status. Ice Beam is probably the option you want to go with if you're going to run Light Screen, though. A move whose only function is to piss Mewtwo off and waste its time. That's the Chansey Special, baby. Light Screen can still lose in the long run to special drops from Mewtwo's Psychic, but it does give you a lot of opportunities to try to freeze it with Ice Beam. Or even just get your own Chansey frozen so it activates Freeze Claws and you don't have to worry about something that can actually make progress on your team getting frozen. Am I glad he's frozen in there and that we're out here? Chansey is very passive and hence is not necessarily an auto-include like Mewtwo, Mew, and Snorlax are. But it does solve the most amount of headaches in the most concise way, so you still do need, like, a damn good reason not to use it. The rest of these are really gonna be in no particular order, unless I, like, specifically mention it. It really just depends on your team composition, and your ideal win condition, and which ones you think are the most handsome. Who's carved up? Who's your carve of beef? Of the RBYOU holy trinity of Snorlax, Tauros, and Chansey, Tauros definitely suffers the most in Ubers. It's still really fucking good, it just goes from being probably the best Pokémon in the game to like, maybe top 5. Tauros just happens to not have the tools to deal with Mewtwo consistently and directly competes with Mewtwo for the role of a revenge killer and late game cleaner. But, since Tauros is no longer the game piece that's the most likely to win you the game, it means you can play a lot more recklessly with it early game and take full advantage of its wall-breaking abilities. And in fact, Tauros' best use in Ubers is probably as an immediately threatening lead. Like, this is Season 6 of an HBO drama, Tauros, where he has nothing left to lose. Something kind of funny is that Tauros can get away with running Stomp over Blizzard in Ubers, because the two main targets for Blizzard, Golem and Rhydon, are a lot harder to fit onto a team, and Stomp gives it a tool to try to cheese Mewtwo as well as goose its odds a little bit against leads like Jinx. You gotta always give respect to the patron saint of bullshit.
Gen 1 Executor is a truly blessed Pokémon and is, in a vacuum, maybe the scariest Pokémon to be looking at at full HP. Executor has the typing and mixed bulk to check a wide variety of Mew and Mewtwo sets and either threaten to give them a debilitating status condition or just blow up on them and kill them from like two-thirds HP. Similar to OU, Executor's problems are that it's slow and kind of predictable and has to take a lot of neutral hits to do its job most of the time. So it tends to not stick around for very long, but the moves it always uses are so fucking good that it's basically guaranteed to do something whenever you send it out. Like, Executor is how you turn those 150 turn Gen 1 Ubers games into like 30 turn games. I don't know, Executor is my favorite Gen 1 OU staple. He's so funny. Sometimes he'll just like kill half your team in three turns. You're my shining boy. You're the best. Zapdos is, unsurprisingly, pretty solid. Zapdos is the most pretty solid Pokemon of all time. In Scarlet and Violet, Zapdos will probably be pretty solid. Zapdos's ground immunity is at a premium in Ubers and allows it to pivot around Mew and scout its moveset, and even completely wall some movesets. They'll usually at least have Explosion to kill you, but that's a good trade because Zapdos is a way lower value target than Mew. Because it sucks against Mewtwo. Basically all Zapdos can do to Mewtwo is paralyze it with Thunder Wave, and you have to get really lucky with Drill Peck crits and full paras to actually be able to beat it. Zapdos does do well against almost everything else though, especially in a metagame with fewer Rhydons, Golems, and Jolteons. And it turns out there's not that many Onyxes either. I suppose it's also worth mentioning that Zapdos is often the cause or victim of two other Gen 1 stat calculation glitches. The first is that if you use agility while you're paralyzed, it will immediately give you twice your original speed, and hence just completely ignore the paralysis speed drop. The other is that if you change your or your opponent's stat stage while your opponent is paralyzed, it will reapply the paralysis speed drop to them. Slowbro is notorious for using this glitch in OU, but it happens a lot more in Ubers because there's way more stat boosting. Like here, this paralyzed Snorlax is faster than this paralyzed Mew because when the Mewtwo used Amnesia against the Mew, it set its speed to 1 16th of its original value. Slowbro is probably the funniest Pokémon that can hang with Mew and Mewtwo in Ubers. Amnesia and its good mixed bulk and resistances make it one of the rare Pokémon that can paralyze Mew and Mewtwo with Thunder Wave, and then actually do something to them once they are paralyzed. Rest also means that you can PP stall non-Thunderbolt Mewtwo's even if they're paralyzed, because Rest will preserve your PP as much as the full paras will preserve theirs. Slowbro also does really well against Snorlax and Tauros, just like it does in OU. And there's something to be said for being an Amnesia Sweeper that's not directly outclassed by Mewtwo. However, Slowbro is probably the most likely Pokémon in the game to get cheesed, because it's slower than everything and asleep half the time. Despite getting absolutely mollywopped by Mewtwo, Gengar is still about as good as it is in OU, and maybe even slightly better, just because it benefits from pretty much everything else about the Ubers metagame. Gengar is still the fastest sleep lead, but it has a lot of mid-game utility in forcing Mew to run Earthquake to deal with it, and also being able to switch into all the explosions. It does still have to worry about pretty much every Pokémon it wants to switch into being able to just hit it with Earthquake, but guess you're just gonna have to use your gamer brain. Jinx functions almost identically to how it does in OU. 
It's still the fastest Pokémon with a reasonably accurate sleep move, and Blizzard can just kill you in one hit. I think I despise this Pokémon. Jinx has almost non-existent mid-game utility outside of switching into random Ice Beams, but it can definitely get you off to a strong start. Counter in the last slot can help you whoop the reasonably common Tauros lead without having to burn your sleep move. I see Jinx as occupying a similar position that Slowbro does in OU, where it's the worst Pokémon that will still help you win most of the time. But I'm no authority. I'm just a simple country spider farmer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's what you've been waiting for. It's the Dingus Lightning Round. These are Pokémon that are good enough to be worth considering, but they are noticeably less consistent than they are in OU. Ready? Fire! is a decent lead who clicks Thunder Wave real nice, but gets set up on all day by the Mubers, and also can't really do anything to Chansey. Theoretically have a high ceiling, but they're slow and weak to special moves and Earthquake. Like, what are you ever gonna bring these in on, other than Zapdos or Seismic Toss Chansey? You'd think Golem would actually be better than Rhydon because Explosion is so important, but Rhydon is still probably better because his Earthquake hits better damage thresholds against Mewtwo and Mew. Same old story, same old song and dance. Has a super effective move, I'm gonna bust. Jolteon is a real cutie pie and likes less Rhydons and Golems, but since being faster than Tauros and Starmie is less important, I feel like outside of walling Zapdos, you would usually rather just have uh, Zapdos. Is another decent lead and can switch into Mewtwo and use Thunder Wave and then switch out is admittedly more niche than any of those Pokémon, but I'm gonna talk about it here anyway, because I really like Gen 1 version. And it's my show, okay? I'm holding the talking pillow. Persian Slash is the most Chad way possible to deal with Reflect Mew, and Screech Hyper Beam is a gamer combo that does more damage than two slashes, and if it doesn't kill a Muber, it at least forces them to switch out of basically any physical attacker you bring in next. Funny stuff. Funny stuff. There aren't really any Pokémon that are bad in OU that are suddenly good in Ubers, but there are a few Pokémon who technically have a very narrow niche in Ubers that they do not have in OU. As I mentioned earlier, Aerodactyl is kind of like the Porygon of Ubers, where it is a basically 100% counter to one set on one good Pokémon, and it sucks against basically everything else in the tier. Honestly, Aerodactyl is probably worse in Ubers than Porygon is in OU, because at least Porygon learns status moves. Aerodactyl does go for the throat, though. Moltres has a similar defensive profile to Zapdos that lets it check Mew, while also bringing that good cheese to the table with agility fire spin. However, other than Fire Blast just having good numbers, fire is a pretty bad offensive type, and also Moltres's move pool is fucking awful. Charizard. Charizard is a little less physically bulky than Moltres and has a way weaker Fire Blast, but has a much better move pool otherwise. Including being able to surprise Mew with counter, because Charizard cannot be one-shot by a plus six Mew body slam. Obviously Mew can beat Moltres and Charizard with Hyper Beam, and Moltres, Charizard, and Aerodactyl with Rock Slide, but like, Hyper Beam is pretty niche, and Rock Slide is like, are you really gonna run it just to hit these fucking goobers? Really? Really? Hypno is kind of like a crappy executor that you can lead with and spread dual status with early while preserving your executor in the back to click its amazing buttons later. Also, Hypno can switch into Mewtwo like one time, I guess, and click Hypnosis 
which is better than seeing 5% of the time. Now where's my Uber's Tradebacks tier so I can bully Mewtwo with Hypnosis Amnesia Hypno? Ditto is apparently more viable here than it is in any tier pre-imposter. Like, I scoured the public Gen 1 Uber's replays for this video, and I saw Ditto a, a couple of times from some pretty good people. Also, it's ranked on Pokemon Perfect, so... I don't know. I guess you can transform into a paralyzed Mewtwo and maybe kill it and beat your opponent with 20 PP or more likely just waste the Mewtwo's PP for 20 turns, but I suppose that is better than a lot of Pokemon can claim to do to Mewtwo. Great job! So there's 21 Pokémon that you can justify using, to some degree. Not to mention the reasonably viable OU Pokémon that I just didn't talk about. Probably more than you were expecting, given Gen 1 Mewtwo's reputation and the reputation of the Psychic type in Gen 1 as a whole. The most consistent counter to Mewtwo is Mewtwo, so you aren't nearly as hamstrung by your other five team slots as it would initially seem. I think that RBY Ubers, and any RBY metagame in general, will improve your hedging ability, aka just picking options that have the most amount of positive outcomes. Gen 1 is unapologetically chaotic and arbitrary, and the outcome of a turn can be very volatile, even when you think you have an advantage. You're also greatly rewarded for positioning yourself intelligently early game to preserve your big stupid win condition. It is Gen 1 though, so sometimes you are just greatly rewarded. Period. I'm cheesing it. Yes, ah. it worked. <laughs> you don't deserve this. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh my god, I'm so good! The early game should be spent spreading your status and trying to open up holes in the other team, but once the Mewtwo presents itself, then neutralizing that obviously becomes the focus of your game plan. Status is the most common tool that Pokémon have to put Mewtwo at a disadvantage, particularly Paralysis. And paralyzing Mewtwo can be very helpful as long as you can capitalize on it in some other way. Like by using multiple Exploders like Mew, Gengar, and Golem, or just using generally strong Pokémon like Rhydon and Hyper Beam Snorlax. Otherwise, if you're using something like Sing and Ice Beam Chansey, or just Ice Beam on your own Mewtwo, then you're going to want to keep their Mewtwo unparalyzed so you can do that to them. Like, if your Mewtwo is at plus four and theirs is frozen, like, what are they gonna do? With Mew, you kind of have to scout its moveset first to really know the best way to deal with it, but in general, the defensive combination of Gengar and something that can take an Earthquake, like Executor or Zapdos, can be very useful. Mew is also similarly exploited by status, and even though Explosion is almost guaranteed to make progress, as long as you can get Mew to explode on something other than your own Mew or Mewtwo, it's usually a net positive trade for you. And if all else fails, just PP stall. Just drain the PP. Just get it all out of there. This is a metagame where the two best Pokémon that you're almost guaranteed to have on every team are two bulky boosting sweepers with recovery and no weaknesses. So assuming you both play pretty conservatively, it will come down to just having more buttons to click than your opponent does. 
If you can see a PP war coming, just try to put off paralyzing them as long as you can, and if possible, just fish for a freeze. If it wasn't for Explosion, I think this tier would be almost unplayable, so I'm really grateful that so many good Pokémon learn it. Otherwise, Gen 1 Ubers is just played largely similarly to Gen 1 OU. You spread your broken status, you click your big stupid moves, you know when to sack stuff to obvious explosions, and since your resources are so similar, you go for good trades and use smart double switches to force your way into an advantage. And just try to be in positions where you're the least likely to just get completely fucked by Gen 1 mechanics. So that's the Gen 1 Ubers video. I hope you learned something. I hope that I will quit seeing Mewtwo every time I close my eyes. You could have lived without all that peepee, -pee, Doc, but I'm glad you brought this to us.